This video is produced utilizing the Random Access system. Random Access is an innovative new technique which frees the viewer from the complex task of determining what to watch and when. Every six milliseconds, Random Access processes the thousands of cable and broadcast channels available around the globe. Then, utilizing a computer-generated profile, presents only those portions suitable to your unique tastes. Warning! While every precaution has been taken to ensure a coherent, quality viewing experience, certain components of the Random Access system are still highly unstable and may on occasion... Careful, Timmy, that's ribonucleic acid, and it could hurt you. Now you can be a still photograph at home or in the office. Oh! Tonight, on Unresolved Mysteries, the bizarre case of an amnesiac Siamese twin who may have killed. Also, did an incredibly advanced civilization perish from the Earth without a trace? Scientists unveil startling new evidence about the lost continent of Atlantis. And you can help capture a dangerous criminal who looks incredibly like me. All that and more tonight on Unresolved Mysteries. Nitrogen, pressure per square inch, 32 foot pounds. One moment. Three parts latex, one part talc. Now, Mr. Flayt is in conference. We need these results immediately. Plunge into bath of jelly. I've been here all night. 
He absolutely needs to get these. Come back later. Say 11. Call, please. Project L3. Code yellow. What you got there, man? Schematics? I thought you were coming up with one of those uh, electric pumps. I'm doing this manually here. Look at these calluses. I could really use one of those electric pumps. You think I'm kidding? Yeah, look at this. Yeah, hang on. Hey, hey, gentle, gentle, all right. Yeah. Check it out. Slowly. It's been leaking like this for the last three months. We got a presentation in front of the board today. Rotten luck, huh? Look, if you can't get the uh, electric pump, you think you might be able to requisition uh, one of those heavy duty patch kits at least? Troy from engineering, right? Jason from accounting. Do you smoke this brand? They're milder than most. Uh, I don't smoke. Jason from accounting, I am really, really sorry. Why don't you hold still? I'll make this as quick as possible. Ah! Watching the time channel. All the time. All the time. Time is now 12.02 p.m. Time is now 12.02 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. Sister, and I haven't aged a day. Time Are you there? I was kidnapped by aliens, Time and I'm dying to tell you about it. PM. Are you there? Time is now oh well. PM. Time is now Hello? PM. Hello? Time is now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. Time? It's now 11.21 p.m. Son, this is your dad. I've just been shot, and I was wondering if you could help me. Ugh! Never mind. Damn. Socks, this is your mother. Damn. Socks Mulder, this is your third grade teacher. I just called to say, oh my god, somebody stabbed me. Uh, 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 uh. This is your next door neighbor. There's somebody standing by your door, shoving pieces of paper under it. He's been doing it all night. Sound is driving me crazy. Do something about it, or I'm calling the cops.
you. Call me by my code name. Xmas. What's new besides ho, ho, ho? You got my message, Agent Mulder. See that you do some good with it. The list, Xmas. Where's the list? I've got it, Agent. Rest assured, I'll be checking it twice. For the last three years, I've been a member of the Ex-Wives, a special unit devoted to those cases involving divorced women which cannot be explained. Previously, I was part of the left-handed midget dancer files, which unfortunately was seen as an excess during the Reagan years and terminated. Since joining the ex-wives, I have been hurled through the air by powers unseen and abducted by unknown forces. I have actually held an alien embryo in my own hands. Yet I still insist that there is a scientific explanation for everything. Why? Because, simply put, I am a complete idiot. Yes, Mulder. I'm having some trouble with the computer. Forget about it and get over to the office. An ex-wife's been murdered. The chicken, yanked from its natural home in the wild and carefully bred over eons to meekly sacrifice itself as food for humankind. But what if somehow its original wild instinct suddenly came to the fore again? What if just as the hominid evolved into man, the evolutionary path of the common barnyard fowl somehow, in secret, proceeded along slightly different lines? What if instead of a placid food source, it had become something larger, less passive? This is an artist rendition of the Chicken Man cited recently in Iowa. Evolution is just a theory, Mulder. Everyone knows that God created life out of inert matter and imbued mankind with an eternal soul. I used to think the same thing, Sully, until I saw the photographic evidence. Shortly after the murder of Mrs. Cluck, some neighbors heard an odd pecking sound. They rushed outside and managed to take this photo. What? I, I don't see anything. Right there. This is his little head and his feet. And this could be his beak. And I think that's a wing. That could just as easily be a yellow bush as a giant chicken. Look, Sully, there have been 2,000 sightings in three days. Hundreds of photographs, tons of physical evidence, and now an ex-wife's been murdered. Why can't you at least admit the possibility that there's a really large chicken out there? Because, Mulder, I don't want to. All right, all right, Miss Smarty Pants Know-It-All. Then how do you account for this? So, giant chicken, what does a big guy like you eat, anyway? Oh. <laughs> Mulder, this is preposterous. How can sound and pictures travel through thin air? There must be little people in this box somewhere. 
I've already got our plane tickets for Iowa. Plane tickets? Flying steel? Mulder, give me a break. If God had intended us to fly, he'd have given us wings. What about the phone, Sully? How does that work? Little angels carry messages back and forth and whisper them in our ears. The dial tone is their laughter, and the busy signal is the little snoring sound they make when they sleep. Get packed. I'll meet you at the plane. I have to see Assistant Director Skinhead. You want to see me, sir? I can't see you, Agent Mulder. I'm involved with someone else. But I was told you wanted to see me. Whoever told you that was mistaken. I'm in a committed relationship. Please, don't make this any harder than it already is. Would you at least take a look at this photo, sir? Agent Mulder. Photos can be faked. People can lie. The world could change to cheese tomorrow. All good things come to a quick end, like lightning in the college night. And there isn't a damn thing we can do about it. You can show me anything, any kind of proof at all, and I still won't believe you. I wouldn't know an alien if one came up and bit me on my ass, much as I think I would enjoy that. When are you going to get that through your head? Why did you want to see me, sir? I already told you. I didn't. You want me off this case, don't you? Getting close to something, aren't I? Aren't I? You were going to try to intimidate me, weren't you? What? The ceiling. The sky. First word. Two syllables. It sounds like... Good evening, and welcome to Unresolved Mysteries. I'm your host, Rubber Sack. Tonight, we begin with a peculiar story. Yes, I know, they're all peculiar. But this one is peculiar in a particularly peculiar fashion. I'm talking really peculiar. It's a story about accidents. Accidents of birth, accidents of happenstance, and a third as yet unnamed type of accident. It's also the story of two brothers, two very close brothers. This is Jules and Jim Smith, Siamese twins, more than simply friends. Throughout their life, the two were inseparable. So inseparable that in fact, when doctors suggested that simple surgery could easily allow them to live as two individual persons, the brothers adamantly refused preferring instead to remain connected at the chest by a small piece of tissue. Despite what many would consider a handicap, the Smith brothers were perpetual optimists. They felt that there was little in life they couldn't handle as long as they were together. Their lives were what one would consider a happy one, until fate intervened with tragic, unforeseeable consequences. On November 17, 1987, while visiting a nearby construction site, a tragic accident occurred. But the accident was only the beginning of their misfortune. Although physically there was no permanent damage done, Jim had undergone a strange metamorphosis. Who? Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? 
who are you? What are you doing attached to my body? Jim, it's me. It's it's Jules. Get the hell away from me. Oh, no. No! Jim Smith awoke with no memory of his brother's existence. But that was only the beginning of a set of circumstances that would lead to the disappearance of Jules. In addition to the amnesia, the severe blow to Jim's head had also apparently caused a change in his personality. Jim, I brought you your favorite pie. I don't want it. What do you mean you don't want it? It's your favorite. I don't want your goddamn pie. Jim, such language. Here's what I think of your stupid pie! Someone please help me. Despite the patient efforts of his brother Jules, Jim's personality and their relationship continued to deteriorate. Won't you please let me know what's going on inside you? Turn the page. I want to help. I only want to help. Just turn the page. <clears throat> How can I help unless you let me in? <laughs> turn the goddamn page. Turn the page. Turn the page. Please turn the page. Someone help. Turn the please. page. Please. One night, the neighbors reported what seemed like a terrific argument between the brothers. Help, help me! me. Who someone, someone please, please help, help me? Days later, when police arrived on the scene, Jules was mysteriously missing. Look, they had a big fight. He left. It's a big deal. <laughs> As a further tantalizing bit of evidence, days before Jules' disappearance, Jim took out a $3 million life insurance policy on his brother. Despite Jim's insistence that Jules is really dead, so far, the insurance company has refused to pay. Look, I'm just broken up about this as the next guy. He was my brother. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I think I can even hear his voice. Did a dark, id-like version of Jim murder his brother? Or has Jim become his brother's keeper? If you have any information on this, or if you would like to take out a $3 million life insurance policy on Jules Smith, dial our toll-free number. Please. Hello. I'm trapped in the building at, at, at 42nd. Where are you? Precisely. Jason. Jason from accounting. Talk to me. I can help you. Let me help you, Jason from accounting. Let me help you. <laughs> Join us for a journey to the mysterious 8th planet, tonight on No 
Uranus. Mother, I told you those airplane things were a lie. We're still in Vancouver. No, we're not, Sully. We're in Iowa. And we just flew here from Washington, D.C. Didn't you see the sign? I know what the sign said, but this is Iowa, understand? Iowa. Mother, look out! What? What is it? You were about to go over 26 miles per hour. If you had exceeded that speed, we would have hurtled off the Earth. I'm beginning the autopsy at precisely 11.21 p.m. Despite the preliminary report, no extraneous jewelry was found on the body. Anything yet? A couple of earrings. They ought to look nice with my blue dress. No money? Not yet. I could use a hand turning her over. Well, what do you make of that? It's a tattoo. A tattoo in the shape of a giant chicken foot? A lot of women have them. Maybe you should get out more. Sully, when are you going to admit that maybe there's something going on here that the orthodox view of science just can't explain? What do you want me to say? That there's a giant chicken running around killing divorcees? That it's part of some alien breeding experiment? Because I won't do it, Mulder, even if it is true. Thanks. What? Never mind. Good. Can I get on with my autopsy now? Fine. Are you saying that my wife was killed by a giant chicken? No, I'm not saying that. But I am thinking it very hard and hoping you can read my mind. What am I thinking now? This is insane. No, that's what I was thinking. The number seven. I was thinking of the number seven. Did your wife like chickens? In what way? Mulder, you're upset. I think this case may be stirring up some painful memories of your lost sister, Samantha. They always gave her the best piece of chicken, Sully. Why? Why don't you let me ask the question? Sir, is there anything you can tell us about your wife's death? No. There, you see? What if he's lying, Sully? 
Sir, are you lying? Because, you know, this is really, really serious. No, I'm not lying. Why would I be lying? Well then, I think we've got all we need here. He's hiding something. Mulder, you have to stop this obsessive paranoia. Where to next? The home of the former Mrs. Cluck. I want to check it for clues. Hey, Socks Mulder. It's me, Joey. Went to high school together. Oh. What are you, nuts? You don't understand. We are completely out of plot ideas. So everyone in our family, every friend, every relative, even acquaintances, quickly dies in a gratuitous fashion. But I don't even have anything to do with the plot. Did you hear what I said? There is no plot. I had a brother who just vanished. It was as if he never even existed. That's crazy. Cheap, maybe, but not crazy. Hey, I'm sorry I even... Sully? I've got something, Sully. What is it? A light switch. Looks like a big goose egg on this one, Mulder. No, Sully. A big chicken egg. Ever since it was first discussed in a platonic dialogue 2,000 years ago, mankind has been fascinated by the myth of lost Atlantis. For centuries, thousands from Plato to Donovan have searched the globe for some small vestige of this ancient utopia. And until tonight, all of them have failed. With all the different myths and theories, it's easy to see why no solid conclusion had been reached. In the text of Timaeus and Critias, Plato himself placed Atlantis here, in Crete, where a thriving metropolis was destroyed almost overnight by an enormous volcanic eruption. The highly advanced civilization found here by archaeologists matched Plato's description almost perfectly. And this area here, 2,000 years ago, was known as the Pillars of Hercules. Still, the controversy continues. In 1969, pop singer Donovan said simply that Atlantis was way down below the ocean where I want to be. And he may have been right. But tonight, we will reveal here for the first time anywhere the final truth about Atlantis, its actual location, its true history, and the final fate of its people. And we didn't need to send our camera crews to the Atlantic or the Aegean to discover the startling secret. No, we sent them here, to a small suburb in New Jersey. Stay tuned.
Good Lord, time is 12.16, again, <laughs> just kidding, time is 12.57 p.m. So, uh, Sully, wanna have sex with me? No. That is one big egg, Mulder. Whoa, got something here. Are you sure you don't wanna have sex with me? Yes. Look at this. Project Big Bunch. Property of Lieutenant Colonel Sanders. Are you absolutely sure you don't want to have sex with me? Yes. You know what that means? Yes. Oh, you're good for me, huh? Stop! I've had just about enough of you. Oh, you have, have you? Yeah. <laughs> Smart guy, huh? You think that's funny? Yeah, I do. Come on, Sully. I'm sure the evidence is safe here. Hey now, watch it with that. That's invaluable evidence of paranormal phenomena. I'll give you invaluable. Ow! <laughs> I've had just about enough of the two of you. I hear they're having a special on chicken breast today. I like really big chicken breasts. Agent Moeller? Colonel? I took a tremendous risk meeting you here today. The chicken special doesn't start until tomorrow. I could be saving 20 or 30%. I just hope you appreciate that. I'm sure all the victims of Project Jalapeno appreciate it. Okay, so maybe we did use a few untested recipes on some unsuspecting Americans, but we were at war, man. Do you know what that means? Yes. It's when two nations vie for political power or land using military force. You think you have all the answers, don't you? With your bright young minds and your tight bodies. Well, we didn't. We didn't know a damn thing back then. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that knew less than we did. The fact remains, Agent Moore, if you know anything now, it's because of us. Project Big Munch was meant to end world hunger. What happened? You don't understand. We bred giant chickens, beautiful chickens, dozens of new species, chickens they could live underwater, survive the inky cold vacuum of space. Chicken that could rip a hole in your chest the size of a watermelon. Okay, so maybe that one wouldn't feed anyone, but it was one hell of a ringer at a cockfight, let me tell you. Think of it though. If we could make one chicken big enough, one egg could feed nations. Then all this nonsense came out about cholesterol and our funding was cut. We were in the middle of a really big chicken then, let me tell you. The size of it. We couldn't even afford to finish building the pen. So one of your prized birds flew the coop? Yes, a particularly deadly, though tender breed. And believe me, Agent Moeller, we're just as interested in securing that chicken as you are. 
planning a particularly big dinner party? Yes, as a matter of fact, we are. Does that surprise you? No. Is there anything you can tell me that can help me find it? I got your coconuts. I don't know how you can eat all those things. It's a habit. I just got back from Washington, an interesting conversation with the colonel. Mulder, we never left Vancouver. Sully, this is Iowa. And I just got back from Washington, and that's where the colonel and my three gunmen are. Then why wasn't I on the flight with you? I was in the three gunmen offices. Never mind that, Sully. Can't you see they're using you? Who's using me, Sully? Who? You know, them. I've got an idea. Do you trust me? Oh, Mulder. Of course not. I'm going to stay here and try to get some sleep. I want you to rub yourself with this chicken seed and stand out in the middle of the forest. Okay. Call me if you see anything. Mm -hmm. Be careful, Sully. Still nothing, Mulder. We'll keep at it, Sully. Time is now 11.21. I feel silly, Mulder. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going to happen. The time is now 11.21. Sully? <gasps> Sully? Time is now Sully? Time is now 11.21. Time's now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11. That is your wife, isn't it? All right, then. 11.21 p.m. Time's now Hey, quiet! PM. Time Keep it down in there. PM. It's 11.21 for pity's sake. Time's now 11.21 p.m. Time is now 11.21 p.m. What the hell is that clucking? Federal agent, step back inside, man. Wait. Yes? What time do you have? It's 11.21. Why? Damn! Freeze! Sully? Huh? Oh, thank God you found me. Uh, yeah, I've been looking for you for hours. I think he's trying to hatch me. Do something. Shoo. Shoo. Go on, get out of here. Believe me now, Sully? I'll admit. It looks and smells like a giant chicken. But that doesn't mean it is a giant chicken. I'm sure you'll be able to prove that once we get him back to the lab. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Agent Mulder. The giant chicken will be coming with me. No, that chicken is a murderer. He's staying with me. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Mulder? You're dealing with forces you can't even begin to understand. Yeah, you can begin to. You got me to lead you to him. You used me. I told you so. I suggest you forget this ever happened. Where are you taking the chicken? My home for Sunday dinner. You and Agent Sully are both invited. I suggest you bring a white wine. A Chardonnay would be nice. And don't worry, Mr. Mulder. The meal would be dietetic. I assure you.
Could the final secret of the lost continent of Atlantis lie here in this suburban home? Yes, it is true. I am the lost continent of Atlantis. Despite the appearance of a perfectly average American lifestyle, Mr. Lantis claims to actually be the lost continent of Atlantis. But how does he explain the obvious discrepancies? You see, back then, I used to hang out with Socrates and Plato and Timaeus, Critias, and all those guys, the sophists, the dog philosophers, and, and whatnot. And, and sometimes during the summer, when it was hot, we'd all hang out at Critias' pool. So one day, I'm walking up with my drink in my hand, and somebody bumps into me, and boom, I fall in head first into the deep end of the pool. I'm a good swimmer, so it wasn't a problem. But I couldn't see it myself, but apparently I must have had a very funny expression on my face as I fell in. Because as soon as I get my head above water, everybody, and I mean everybody, is laughing. Not just chuckling, mind you, laughing hysterically. And for weeks, nobody lets me forget about it, weeks, everyone I walks into says, hey, there goes the sunken continent. They all thought it was funny. I still don't get it. Plato's dialogue also contained a precise description of the capital city, a stunning metropolis composed of three rings with water and a vast port running through them. A hat. It was a hat. I'd gotten this big round hat on vacation, and I was wearing it at the party. And you know, my head would jut through the center. And Timaeus, I think it was, said, hey, look, there goes the continent of Atlantis with this new capital city. And everybody laughed because, for some reason, Everyone always found Timaeus to be a very funny guy. Again, this is something that I just failed to see the humor in. And so, thanks to modern science, an ancient secret is finally brought to light. If you have any information concerning Atlantis, the lost continent, how to cure incontinence, or if you'd like to take out a life insurance policy on anyone in this program, please call the on-screen number. Our operators are standing by. And be sure to join us next week as we meet Oziah Hendrick, a California man who claims to be the Ark of Covenant. I could not believe it. All the tribes of Israel hoisted me on their shoulders and shouted, Praise Yahweh! You're watching the Me Channel. It's not about you anymore. Hello, it's me again.
Why don't we change our name to the Xmas Files? Here, here. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Agent Mulder, I changed my mind. I would like to see her. What's that, sir? Never mind. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. We think nothing of the animals we eat, but perhaps they think as little or less of us. And if somehow, in the scheme of things, the tables are one day turned, perhaps one day it will be the human race that is fried over easy. And now, the case of the talking burglar. For months now, police in the Northeast have been vexed by a master criminal whom the press have dubbed the Talking Burglar. His most recent attack occurred here, in this quiet suburban home in Ossining, New York. At about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the burglar boldly approached the front door. Although the door was locked, the burglar was apparently an expert lock picker. And within moments, he gained access. Inside, a totally unsuspecting young couple, Mr. and Mrs. Bojo Jones, were enjoying a quiet evening at home when they heard the front door open. Within seconds, a handsome man in a trench coat entered their living room. They both noticed he was talking to thin air, as though to an unseen camera. Naturally, Mr. Jones attempted to learn who he was and what he was doing in their home. Who are you? What are you doing here? Strangely, the man continued talking. The couple tried in vain to subdue him. Within minutes, the talking stranger had bound and gagged them. He then proceeded to ransack their home, looking for this. <coughs> if you know where he might be, or if you'd like to take out a $3 million insurance policy on him, call our on-screen number. I'll see you next week with more Unresolved Mysteries. Next week on The X-Wives. Sally! Mulder! Sally! Mulder! Sally! Say, I made that. No. Say, I made that. No. <laughs> I thought I was the one with the choices. Now I find. There are too many voices With my finger on the button It all comes down to nothing Baby, I am out of control All the lights are flashing by In a dozen colors I can't name There's no time to wonder why Or if I've gone insane with my finger on the button, it all comes down to nothing. Baby, I am out of control.
Jim, it's me, it's Jewel. <laughs> 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 What? That, that tsunami, I think there is a perfect use for the word. Well, it won't work. Well, it won't work! <laughs> Action! Show it to him. Show, show it to him.